Uh, slams the heightened police presence in the Kingdom of Jesus Christ compound of fugitive televangelist Apollo Kibuloy. He insists there's no need for dozens of police officers to go after a single person. Duterte earlier accused authorities of overkill when it tried to serve an arrest warrant against Kibuloy. <laughs> Pastor pa. Mas ang dami nila. Baka in phone, hindi ko lang maano kasi ano, malapit ako sa police eh. Once upon a time I was president. Once upon a time I was a mayor. Talagang mahal ko ang police pati sundalo. Kaya this is the first time ako nag-react. Mm -hmm. This is the first time ako nagsalita mm -hmm. sa bagay na yan. Mm -hmm. Ang kalaban ng gobyerno, wag na lang yung pulis pati military, ayaw kong idadamay. Gobyerno na lang. Ang kalaban ng gobyerno, si Pastor Kibuloy. Isa lang yan. Isang uh -huh. tao lang po yan. Uh -huh. uh, nagkulang tayo ng bagay. Wala na masyadong away noon. So dapat yung mga ganun, uh, nakapul battle gear. Si past isang pastor <laughs> isang pastor na of uh, Jesus Christ the name above every name Ang laki ng congregation na yan tapos naka full battle gear kayo Kibuloy is wanted in the Philippines for alleged child and sexual abuse and human trafficking. He is also on the FBI's most wanted list. Former Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte rails against an international probe on his bloody war on drugs. Speaking on a podcast with his former spokesperson, Attorney Harry Roque and Attorney Trixie Angeles, Duterte flashed his middle finger when asked about his response to the International Criminal Court's investigation. He maintains the ICC has no jurisdiction over the Philippines after the country withdrew from the tribunal in 2019. Duterte is among the subjects of the ICC's probe on alleged crimes against humanity committed during his anti-drug campaign. I do not recognize that. Yeah. Uh, Ano yung ICC na yan? Uh, are we or are we not? Mm -hmm. Yan ang tanong ko muna is jurisdiction. Correct. Uh, Abogado ako eh. Jurisdiction. First, first question. Fiscal ako. Whenever I face a case dito sa korte, everyday, magtanong ako dyan. Mm -hmm. Do I have the power May jurisdiction ba ako dito sa kasong in political prosecution? Wala. O huwag tayong magdaldal ng ano, let's go legal. ICC? Ito no, yung no. ICC o? Oh. <laughs> Duterte was also asked if he would attend the House Quad Committee's probe on the alleged links between the drug war and illegal pogos, but he did not answer the question. The former Philippine leader also defending his move of legalizing the controversial pogo industry. Duterte was accused by House lawmaker Jervil Luistro of bypassing Congress when he issued Executive Order No. 13, which regulated pogos. Luistro said online gambling was never mentioned in the legalization that credited that created rather PAGCOR, adding Duterte essentially repealed a law when he issued the EO. Duterte firing back, saying he had no choice but to regulate the now banned industry. Nanjan na yan. Lat ng sugal sa Pilipinas sakla hantak nanjan na yan. Pagkarumaraming da. Kung ikay na may presidente na ginamit mo yung otak mo, if it flip proliferation of the game, gambling game. It's either you have the option 
to allow it openly in a disorderly, disorderly manner. Hayaan mo and allow the pogo operators to corrupt government. Mm -hmm. Kasi ikukorrupt niya yung police, ikukorrupt niya yung mayor, congressman, gobernador. Ngayon, ang mabuti talagang gawain mo, sana ma-presidente ka. Uh, para ma-educate ma, 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 ma ka rin. You regulate. That is really what it is. Regulate. Legal woes piling up for dismissed Bamban Mayor Alice Go. The Internal Revenue Bureau filed a 500,000 peso tax evasion charge against Go, stemming from the transfer of her shares in the Baofu land, which hosted two pogos in Bamban. This comes, after a, this comes a day after the office of the Ombudsman dismissed the mayor after she was found guilty of grave misconduct. She was temporarily replaced by Bamban Councillor Erano Timba who all who took his oath on Wednesday. Goh's lawyer, meanwhile, vows to appeal her dismissal. The mayor was dismissed because of her issuing the mayor's permit for the, for the Spogo operation. But the dilemma is why will not she issue a mayor's permit to a business applicant who is qualified? Siya? Go is also facing another criminal complaint of human trafficking. The dismissed mayor remains in hiding despite a Senate arrest order against her. Philippine Senate President Francis Escudero sets a meeting with Transport Chief Jaime Bautista to relay concerns over the public transport modernization program. Escudero is among the senators who want to suspend the program due to its supposed flaws. Despite this, Escudero asserts the Senate is not against modernization. Maliwanag sa posisyon ng Senado, hindi kami tutol sa modernisasyon. Ito'y dapat gawin lamang ng tama, maayos at ng may sapat na tulong sa bawat grupo na nag-consolidate, super at operator. Sila ay sumunod sa gobyerno, sumang-ayon sa patakaran ng gobyerno, pero marami pa rin pagkukulang na dapat punuan. Bagay na tatalakayin ko rin kay Secretary Bautista sa lalong madaling panahon. Transport groups Manibela and Piston are now on their second day of strike against the controversial program. They are appealing to the public for understanding after their protest actions caused traffic congestion Wednesday. The DOTR chief also not happy with the protests. Kitang kita natin ngayon makapangyarihan ang jeepney. Sa opinion ko nakarating ito at umaalingaw ngaw ito sa Malacanang. Yung sinasabi mo po pangulong na Uh, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., ito po yung totoong majority na dapat ito yung pakinggan mo. Umani ng batikos mula sa mga mananakay ang kanilang pagkilos. Sa halip na harangan ng kalsada, nananawagan kami na tulungan kaming mapaganda ang modernization program. Now, huge crowds turn out in Manila to watch the grand homecoming parade and awarding ceremony for the Philippine Olympic team led by double gold medalist Carlos Yulo. Jeffrey Hernandez with the story. Crowds applauded as Filipino Olympians walked outside the Aliu Theater, the starting point for the grand homecoming parade. Spectators waving Philippine flags erupted to cheers as the athletes made their way to their float. It was a festive atmosphere with boisterous spectators and lively music filling the grounds. All this to honor the Philippine team after their best ever finish in Olympic history, bringing home two golds and two bronze medals. The Olympic theme float was adorned with images of the athletes showcasing their respective sports. As the parade made its way through the city, the athletes were welcomed as heroes and their success celebrated at every turn. Fans along the parade route eagerly awaited for the motorcade to pass, screaming the names of their favorite athletes. Some lucky fans managed to catch t-shirts personally signed by the gymnastic sensation Carlos Yulo and the other Olympians, adding to the excitement of the day. Some spectators took matters into their own hands by throwing t-shirts and other belongings to the athletes who signed and returned the items. 
Confetti also rained down from above. To be able to experience po yung speed na makita po sila personally is um, moment po na talagang di mo malilimutan kasi it's written in the history naman po. Dito po siya lang makigasto po namin sila makakita. Gusto mo rin po maging atleta pag laki mo? Opo. The athletes said they were deeply moved by the overwhelming warmth and enthusiasm of their fellow Filipinos. Sobrang saya po namin, tsaka napaka-overwhelming, mix emotion po. Sa lahat po ng kababayan ko sa buong mundo, tapos pauspuso po kaming nagpapasalamat sa suporta nyo at sa prayers nyo. Huwag nyo pigilan na abutin ang pangarap ninyo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa Panginoon sa paggabay sa amin, pagbigay po ng... Um, ng lakas para ipagtaguyod yung mga pangarap namin sa buhay. The Grand Parade concluded at the historic Rizal Memorial Sports Complex where the Filipino Olympians were honored by the local government of Manila. Jeffrey Hernaez, ABS-CBN News. Corporate and government rewards are showered on the Philippine Olympic team after the athletes delivered the country's best showing in the Olympics. Andrea Taguines gives us a look. Just like how athletes from around the world paraded at the Seine River during the opening of the Paris Olympics, Filipino double gold medalist Carlos Yulo again made a grand fluvial entrance of sorts. Accompanied by his longtime advocate, Gymnastics Association of the Philippines President Sincha Carrion, they rode a gondola all the way to his new home in McKinley Hill in Taguig. His three-bedroom condo unit gifted by property giant Megaworld is worth a whopping 32 million pesos. Megaworld originally pledged a two-bedroom condo unit worth 24 million pesos to Carlos Yulo. But when our golden boy clinched a second gold medal at the men's vault finals of the Paris Olympics, his reward also got an upgrade. Yulo toured his new and fully furnished condo unit, which even has a coffee table designed like an Olympic gold medal, and a hallway lined with frames of newspaper clippings featuring his historic Olympic feet. Nagulat din po ako nung nakita ko kanina. Kaya, um, yeah, papahalagan and iingatan po yung mga ganong um, biyaya ng Diyos din po at mga bigay ng uh, mga mabubuting tao. Maraming maraming salamat po. Since may bahay ka na, may, meron ka na bang plan magpakasali? <laughs> um, sa akin na lang po yan. Earlier on the same day, the House of Representatives also honored the Philippine Olympians. Yulo was awarded the Congressional Medal of Excellence by House Speaker Martin Romualdez and a total of 14 million pesos, courtesy of the lower house and the funds raised by lawmakers themselves. Bronze medalist boxers Nesty Petesho and Ira Villegas also got 2.5 million pesos each. According to Romualdez, he will be initiating a review of the country's laws with the goal of boosting government support for athletes. Not to be outdone, the Malacanang Palace also held the celebration in honor of the Olympians on Tuesday night, following their arrival in Manila. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. gave Yulo 20 million pesos in cash, along with the Presidential Medal of Merit. That's on top of the 20 million pesos Yulo will be receiving from the country's gaming regulator, PAGCOR. Petesho and Villegas, meanwhile, got 2 million pesos each from the office of the president, while the rest of the Olympians got a million pesos respectively. Even their coaching teams benefited from the windfall with half a million pesos each. Yulo is also expected to receive 2 million pesos from the local government of Manila, where he grew up. Several private companies have also earlier pledged various incentives for Yulo. Yulo said he is grateful for everything, but he also stressed the importance of supporting athletes like him way before their podium victory. Hindi naman po about sa money lang lahat po. Kailangan din po ng other supports. Like sa equipment and food, sa mental training po, yung mga ganang aspect po ng sa sports po. Yulo has said that he will first get some R&R before getting back to training for his future competitions, including the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028. When asked if there's a possibility that he will be competing there with his siblings, who are also gymnasts, this is what he said. Really hoping po, I'm praying for that po, na matuloy po. Team Yulo, 2028. Yes po. Andrea Taguines, ABS-CBN News. Let's get an update now on the weather from Pagasa.